everyone my name is dipendra and i welcome you all on the behalf of creative edge in this video we will talk about the topic data sufficiency from aptitude data sufficiency means you know you'll be given a question and along with the question you'll be given certain statements and what you need not do is you need not figure out the answer to the question basically what you are supposed to figure out is whether the question can be solved with the help of the data given to you or not so whatever amount of data is given to you along with the question is that data sufficient or not to figure out the answer that is what you need to determine uh if i could demonstrate this question or this category or this types of questions which are asked under the topic data sufficiency the question could be like this there will be first of all a question will be asked to determine something along with that question you will be given certain statements in which the data which is required or needed to solve the question will be given and obviously along with this question and these statements you will be given the options which you are supposed to mark you need to understand while solving the question for example you are reading this question and to solve this question you adapt an approach now what is the approach that whatever the question you are given that question if with the help of statement one alone can be solved let's say one alone you are not checking or going with this statement to alone i'm just trying to tell you the algorithm that how should you approach these kind of questions so what you're trying to do is you're trying to solve the question by using the data given in the statement one alone you're not looking at the statement two as of now and if you are able to figure out the answer to statement one alone now there are two possibilities if statement one alone was sufficient and now what you're doing is you're moving towards this approach that whether answer can be done or answer can be figured out with the help of statement two alone or not which means after solving it or after trying to solve it with the help of statement one alone now you are jumping towards statement two well when you want to solve it through statement two alone and if you are capable of solving it with the help of statement two alone as well then i hope i did not tell this which option are you supposed to mark either one or two is sufficient what you could figure out is sir whether i use statement one alone or statement two alone the question can be solved with either of these statements well in that case option c is what you're supposed to mark what might or what else might happen is that you were able to figure out the answer with the help of statement one alone however statement two alone is not sufficient to solve the question well in that case you're supposed to mark option a so in this scenario the c option needs to be marked in this scenario option a needs to be marked i hope you all are getting that well apart from that let's say statement one alone was not sufficient but what you do is you try and solve it with the help of statement two alone and you are able to solve it with the help of statement two alone what i'm trying to say is statement one alone was not sufficient so what you do is you forget statement one for a while and you jump to the statement two and with the help of statement two alone you are able to get the answer well when you are able to get the answer with the help of statement two alone which option i need not tell you needs to be marked this option b that statement two alone is sufficient while one alone was not sufficient for a while let's assume that statement two alone was also not sufficient through which you were able to solve the question which means statement one akele ko maine try kiya question nahi solve hua statement two bhi try kiya aur question solve nahi hua abhi dhyan se sunenge ab aap ye conclude nahi karenge that neither one nor two is sufficient usse pehle ek aur possibility derive hoti hai wo ye obviously is wale scenario mein when one alone was not sufficient two alone was sufficient you could have mark b option but there is third more possibility that one alone and two alone when both of them were not sufficient what you do or what you did was let's say that you try to solve this with the help of both of these statements together that one and two you combined whatever data is given in statement one alone and two alone you merge that data and you combine that data and then you use this data and imagine for a while if after doing that one and two combinedly together in a you know whole as a whole when you use that data and if you are able to figure out the answer then you say that both statement one and two are sufficient well that means you're supposed to mark option e well what might happen in the worst scenario is that one alone neither one alone nor two alone or not even one and two together would be sufficient well in that case you 
obviously you don't have any other choice you are left with nothing else so simply you would say the whatever the data is given to you it is inadequate to solve the question the data is not sufficient and the question cannot be solved with the data given to us and in that case you would say that option d needs to be marked so even if one and two together don't work in that case then finally you go with mark option d i hope you're realizing the flow chart how are you going to mark these following options with that, let's get more clarity on this topic through a question. I hope you all have watched a video on blood relations, which you have already covered. If you haven't watched the video on blood relations, I would request you to watch the video first. Then you'll be able to understand this question in a better manner. Well, what are we asked in this question? The question says, how is J related to P? So the relationship between J and P is asked. Well, basically, what you need to understand is you need not determine the answer. What you need to determine is whether the answer can be determined with the help of the data given or not. Which means what my approach should be, I'll not look at statement 2 as of now, I'll just look at statement 1. Well, when I read statement 1 alone, 1 alone, what does it say? M is brother of P and T sister of P. Well, in blood relations, we have discussed that if M is brother, M has to be a male and I'll put a square over M. And M is the brother of P, which means what? M and P are the siblings. However, what I don't know is what is the gender of P. And what are we additionally told is T is sister of P. So P has one sister, which is T. And if T is a sister, which means she is a female. And I'll put a circle over her name. So this is how M, P and T are happening to be the siblings, a pair of siblings. However, what I am not able to determine is that what is the gender of P. Anyway, I hope you must have noticed that with the help of statement one alone, I could not figure out that how is J related to P because I could draw P in this family tree, but I could not draw J anywhere. So what I'll do is I'll forget statement one for a while and I'll use statement two alone now. I hope you are understanding this algorithm. So what I'm going to do is I'll use this statement two alone. Well, when I use statement two alone, I don't look at this flow chart now. I'll be looking at this statement two alone, how P's mother is married to J's husband. Now this is a little tricky. The data is given in a little, you know, tricky manner. I repeat, P's mother, let's say this is P. I don't know what is the gender of P, but whosoever is P's mother, that lady is married to J's husband. Now you need to understand polygamy is not allowed in the blood relations questions. So you structured or sorted. P ki jo mother hai, unhone J ke husband se shaadi ki hai, which means P ki mother J hai. Kyunki agar P ki mother ne J ke husband se shaadi ki hai, to J is what? J happens to be the mother of P. I hope you are understanding that. So if J is the mother of P, this is how you can derive this. I am repeating my words. You need to understand what are we told? P's mother is married to J's husband. So J is the lady who has a husband. And with this husband, P's mother is getting married. I hope this flow chart is clearly understood. Now, who has one son and two daughters? Although this much data, even this, this data is a little superfluous here. What do you need not deal with this? This, this data, this is completely not needed. Because whatever we asked, we were asked, how is J related to P? And the relationship between J and P can easily be determined with the help of this much data only. So statement two alone, I would say was sufficient to figure out the answer. While obviously we have tried that one alone was simply not sufficient. I would mark option B and this is how you'll get the answer to the question. I hope you have understood how are we solving this question. Let's get more clarity on these kind of questions through one more example so that, so that I can make you understand how are you supposed to mark the correct options. Look at this question everyone. Again a very interesting question, a very simple one. This will give you more clarity ki options aapko kaise mark karne. Jaise, question, what will be the total weight of 10 poles? Each of the same weight. Malab, there are 10 poles or her pole ka weight same hai. Now again, algorithm same hai. Algorithm kati hai. Aap pehle statement one alone try karenge. So when you are trying statement one alone, one fourth of the weight of each pole is 5 kg. What are we told? Let's say each pole weighs P. P kg is the weight of each pole. So what are we told? One fourth of each pole is 5 kg. I hope I did not tell you ki agar one fourth of a each pole is 5 kg, so pole definitely 20 kg. And if one pole 20 kg, ka hai, shall I or can I evaluate the weight of 10 poles? I hope I can, which is going to be nothing but 200 kg. Let me just remind you one more time. You need not figure out the answer. 
you need to figure out whether this data was sufficient or not. And I can very easily say that statement one alone was sufficient. We haven't used or read statement two as of now. Well, what are you supposed to do then? You will check it with the help of statement two alone. You will forget statement one and now we'll try and solve the question with the help of statement two alone. Well, statement two says the total weight of three poles is 20 kgs more than the total weight of two poles. I hope you are realizing by reading this statement only you can easily crack. We can again get the answer with the help of statement two alone as well. How? What are we told? The total weight of three poles. So total weight of three poles. Let's say eight pole ka weight agar three p hai. Forgetting this data for a while. So agar eight pole ka weight p hai, to three poles ka weight should be three p. And two poles ka weight should be t p and what two p. And what are we told? That three poles ka weight, two poles ke weight se twenty kg is zada hai. Which simply means that eight pole ka weight twenty kg hai. Or agar eight pole ka weight twenty hai, to ten poles ka weight two thousand kg, two hundred kg is ho jayega. What I'm trying to make you understand is that statement two alone was also sufficient to figure out the answer. I hope you're realizing you will not mark that both statement one and two are sufficient. This you should mark when statement one and two combinedly are required to figure out the answer. In this scenario, statement one alone was sufficient and statement two alone was also sufficient. Well, here I should be marking option C is the correct answer. Either one or C is sufficient to solve the question. I hope you have gotten a lot of clarity on data sufficiency. For more practice, you can log on to our website and get in touch with us. Thank you so much. Take care everyone.